Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with creamy garlic shrimp toast. That's right, this incredibly delicious recipe would be good on so many different things, like pasta, rice, potato, just to name a few. But to me, enjoying this on a nice piece of bread that we pan toasted in butter is the best way to go. And not only is this dish incredibly tasty and easy, once we have everything prepped, it only takes like five minutes to cook start to finish. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we should prep is our shrimp. And for this, we're gonna need some raw, peeled and deveined shrimp. Okay, so do not accidentally buy the cooked shrimp. That will not work for this. And if we're using some nice big shrimp like this, I like to do what's called butterfly them, which means cutting them in half with our knife held parallel to the cutting board like this. And not only is that gonna give these a very cool appearance once they're cooked, but we're creating lots of surface area. And as you know, when it comes to cooking, Surface area means flavor. And like I said, I'm doing this because I'm using large shrimp, sold as 1620s, meaning they're 16 to 20 to a pound. But if you happen to be using small shrimp, you probably don't even have to do this. And if you don't feel comfortable cutting it like I'm showing you here, you can if you want, hold it like this instead and cut down. All right, maybe you'll find that a little easier. But bottom line, if you don't cut yourself, your technique was excellent. And then what we'll do once we have those raw shrimp sliced in half and transferred into some kind of mixing bowl is that we will season those up with a few shakes of cayenne as well as a little bit of smoked paprika, which I like to refer to as the bacon of spices since it gives us a little touch of smoky sweetness and we don't have to bother any pigs to do it. And then we'll finish this up with a whole bunch of crushed or finely minced garlic and we will stir that in until these shrimp are evenly coated. And for two portions, which is what I'm making here, I think we want at least three nice big cloves of garlic. But as usual, exact amounts are up to you, since you're the one that's going to eat this. But personally, I don't think we want to be shy with the garlic, since it is in the name of the dish after all. And then what we'll do once that's been mixed up is cover it in plastic. And we'll pop that in the fridge until we're ready to use it. And once that's set, we can move on to zesting a lemon. Which of course means using a microplane to remove only the yellow part from the skin which of course is where all that beautiful lemon flavor is. And then besides the zest, once we're done, we'll cut that lemon in half and we will juice one half, which is gonna give us about two tablespoons of juice. And then besides our two forms of lemon, we'll also wanna do a little bit of freshly chopped Italian parsley, as well as measure out a half a cup of heavy cream. And that's gonna be pretty much it for our ingredients, except for the all important toast. And for that, I'm gonna use a couple nice big thick slices of French bread Okay, at least three quarters of an inch to an inch thick. And then once we have that sliced, I'm gonna do something I almost never do, and that is trim most of the crust off the bread. And I'm not doing that because I think I'm too good for crust, like those rich people in that movie. But the reason I'm doing this is simply to make for a little more luxurious experience when we eat this. Since when we pan fry this bread and butter, that already tough crust does get a little bit tougher, and we just have to end up doing a little more work to cut through it, which really is no big deal but I just don't want any distractions, no matter how ridiculously minor, to get in the way of me enjoying my creamy garlic shrimp toast. So I will be trimming, you suit yourself. And then once our bread's set, we're ready to toast it in some clarified butter, which we make by melting some whole butter, which I do in the microwave. And then once it's melted, all we have to do is spoon that light foamy stuff off the top, which is basically the milky part of the butter. And once we skim that off, We'll just be left with that beautiful golden butter fat, also known in the business as clarified butter. Oh, and please note there will be a little bit of watery liquid at the bottom, which is basically the whey, and we don't want to mix that in. So all we want to do is spoon off this beautiful golden oil. And for our toast, we will transfer about four tablespoons of that into a pan set over medium heat, and we will toast our bread in that butter on both sides to a beautiful golden brown. And if four tablespoons sounds like too much, it's not. And to prove it, I'm going to spoon a little more over the top. But anyway, we'll go ahead and toast that on both sides. And why did I reach for one piece and then decide to turn the other? I have no idea. Although maybe I thought that one piece was darker, so I decided to turn it first. But who knows? And yes, as we toast it, that bread is going to absorb most of the butter, which is totally fine and exactly what we want. And that's it. Once our bread has been toasted to a beautiful golden brown on both sides, we'll go ahead and remove those to a plate, and we will set those aside 
until we're ready to smother those in our creamy garlic shrimp, which we're going to do in the same pan. And if we happen to see any crumbs of bread, we should probably remove those since it's going to get pretty hot and we don't want those to burn and have an off flavor. At which point we'll add a few more tablespoons of clarified butter in and we'll place this over high heat and we will let it get very, very hot. And since we are using clarified butter, we don't have to worry about those milk solids burning, which is one of the big advantages of clarified butter. And then what we'll do when we see that very first wisp of smoke is quickly transfer in our shrimp and we will use our tongs to spread those out as evenly as we can. And then once that's been accomplished, what we'll do is let that shrimp sear on high heat for about one minute. And during that time, it's very important we don't stir or toss these. And for a dish like this, a really good sear on a little bit is better than a bad sear on a lot of it, which is what would happen if we started to stir this around. So let's just let that bottom surface sear, which will result in a deeper, more shrimpier flavor. And that's going to work out better flavor-wise than if we tried to sear everything. And at any point while that's happening, we can go ahead and toss in our lemon zest. And then after about a minute or so of searing, you'll notice those shrimp pieces that were probably stuck will have started to release from the pan. And you should at this point be smelling a gorgeous roasted shrimp aroma and a very garlicky one at that. And if you're thinking that searing on one side sounds fine, but how are the tops of the shrimps going to get cooked? Well, that's all going to happen in the couple minutes it takes to make our sauce. Since what we'll do at this point is dump in our lemon juice, followed by our heavy cream, and then we'll grab a spoon and give everything a stir, making sure we're scraping and deglazing any of that deliciousness off the bottom. And then what's going to happen over the course of the next minute and a half to two minutes, that cream is going to start to boil and reduce, and it'll start to thicken up. And by the time it does, if everything's gone according to plan, our shrimp is finished cooking perfectly, at which point we are pretty much done. Okay, all we need to do to finish this is turn off the heat and we will stir in our freshly chopped Italian parsley. And basically as soon as that's been mixed in and we've checked the seasoning and we're happy with how this tastes, we are officially done. And no, we didn't put any salt in yet. And quite often with shrimp, we don't need to. But of course, we'll check just in case. And that's it. We'll go ahead and serve that up on our toast, which we can just do by spooning it over. But I went with the tongs approach for the shrimp so I can get those piled up just how I want. And how I want is so everything's on the toast. And then once I had half the shrimp on, I went ahead and spooned over half the sauce. And I cannot begin to explain how excited I was to tear into this. But before that, I had to finish with a little bit of parsley and then set it on a placemat so I could take some contractually obligated pictures. But then I grabbed a fork and knife and went to town. And so I don't pull a muscle. I'm going to start off slow and easy and just taste one piece of shrimp, which was creamy, garlicky, and unbelievably delicious. All right, that, my friends, is some of the best garlic shrimp you'll ever taste. But please do not eat the shrimp alone. We will, of course, enjoy that with our buttery pan-toasted bread, which, as you might imagine, is just a fantastic combination. And yes, I'm still trying to figure out how to use a knife and fork, as I hold the bread with the knife and cut with the fork. But that works, too. And as I was enjoying this, I was thinking we might have to start doing garlic bread soaked in cream. I mean, I like regular garlic bread, but this stuff was ridiculous. And when you add in that sweet shrimp and that subtle hint of smoky paprika and that little touch of lemon, I really could not have been happier with how this came out. But like I said, if you want to do this on rice or noodles, go for it. I mean, you are after all the chef job of what to put this on. But personally, I have to have the toast. And as you might have noticed, because we butterflied all those shrimp, when they cook, they curl up into the most adorable shape. Okay, sort of a little corkscrew, which just does an absolutely magnificent job of holding on to that amazing sauce. Not to mention looks very cool. Oh, and I should mention this exact same technique with this exact same sauce on the exact same toast will work with other kinds of shellfish and seafood. Right, you could do this with scallops or lobster or crayfish, or crawfish, or crawdads, or craydads. But anyway, you get the idea. This is not just a recipe. This is a technique. But whether you make it with something else, or with some nice big shrimp like I did here, either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.